Hey everybody, Donnie coming at you. I really hope you guys are having a great day today. I wanted to bring you into the shop, do a quick rundown of how I sharpen uh, my wood turning tools. I'm going to go over bowl gouge, maybe a scraper and a skew, mainly bowl gouge, uh, spindle gouge. want to show you guys how it's done. I use the one-way uh, Wolverine setup, a Rikon slow speed grinder, and a marker. So let's get you over here by the tools so you guys can see what's happening. Okay, so as I already mentioned, we are going to use the Rikon low speed grinder. Um, I definitely recommend a low speed grinder as it slows down on heat buildup and things like that. You really don't need a, a super fast grinder. Can you sharpen on a, on a regular grinder? Absolutely. But if you're kind of new to sharpening, or if you're not really confident enough to do your sharpening, I highly suggest you grab a low speed grinder. I will have a link in the description of all the tools and all the things that I use today and wanna to show you. So basically the first thing we wanna do, um, as you're sharpening your tools, you need to know the angle that you want. So let me show you guys real quick. This is the the very grind from uh, one way it comes as part of a system you get the very grind you get the holder here that goes with your lathe uh, with your <laughs> your lathe with your grinder and you also get a rest so uh, you know there'll be a link in the description for this stuff this is all part of a system a system that is designed to allow you to have consistent sharpening angles every single time. Yes, there are tons of people that do freehand sharpening and things like that. I'm just showing you what I do in my shop. So I use the one-way jig from um, the, the one-way Wolverine jig and the setup that goes along with it. I have mine set on an angle that goes according to what Doug Thompson suggests when you purchase his tools. Now this can be used on any set of tools. It doesn't have to be Doug Thompson, but this is a Doug Thompson 3 8 bowl gouge that we're gonna show you guys an example on as we're going through it. You can do this on Sorby bowl gouges. Um, the brand does not matter at all whatsoever, but we're gonna show you guys on this one here. It's very simple to do. The first thing you wanna do in your setup is you have to maintain a specific consistency from the end of the tool to the grinder. So you use what you use a simple jig and Doug Thompson suggests that you go an inch and three quarters from the end of the tool, from the end of the, the jig to the end of the tool. So I've made myself a very simple little jig here and I'll bring you guys in in a close-up shot so you can see this very simple jig. I rest my tool up against it. And now every single time I consistently have an inch and three quarters from the end of the tool to the end of this. As you sharpen, obviously, this is going to change. So every time you sharpen, you go back over and you test it in the jig. You should not be sharpening enough every single time that you have to change this in the middle of you sharpening, just so we are very clear about that simple fact. Once we put the jig in and we have it set, I like to take a marker <clears throat> and I put a little bit of black on the front of the tool here. The reason I do that, the reason I do that is where I need to adjust how far out this tool is, okay? And this is adjustable by a handle right here, and this allows you to move this in for different tool types, tool lengths, tools without handles. I have a handle on this tool right here. So what we mainly wanna do is we wanna come over and we wanna slightly, we wanna sight where the tool meets the angle here okay and an easy way to check that is with the marker we slowly spin the wheel and this will tell us where we're hitting and where we're not hitting so if you can see right there we're hitting at the top but we're not hitting at the bottom 
That means it is angled in. So we need to push the tool rest in slightly because the top of the tool is hitting before the bottom. We want this thing to hit evenly. And now if you look, it hits all the way from the bottom of the tool to the top of the tool. Very simple process, very easy to check out. Okay, once that's locked in. Now, I'm using CBN wheels here. This is an 80 grit, this is a 180 grit on a low speed grinder. You do not have to have CBN wheels, you do not have to use CBN wheels. I upgraded from the standard wheels just because I knew that CBN wheels didn't generate as much heat. They stay flat, you do not have to keep them square or parallel. These do not wear down. They're a really good option if you can afford these. Save up some money, get you a decent set of CBN wheels, and you're good to go. The reason between the 80 and the 180. If you need to grind or, fr or make a new tool or get an edge back with a lot of grinding, you want to use the 80 grit. If you are freshening up your tool in between cuts as you're turning something, the 180 is perfect. There are other people now that are going up to higher grits and other, I, this is what I have, this is what I use. So now we have our tool rest set, we have the angle set, we, have, we know we're perfect. All we simply do is turn the machine on and we are gonna work on one edge of the wing at a time, not the center, we're gonna work on an edge of the wing. So we're gonna come up to the wing and we're just going to work on the wing for just a second here. And it puts an incredible edge on it. Now we're going to flip to the other edge. So as you can see, I just move the tool around a little bit. Now I also keep just a little thing of water here that kind of goes up to the top. And I can just dip my tool in it just to make sure that it doesn't get super hot. I wanna make sure that this doesn't overheat and change any kind of tempering or anything like that. So all we do is just bring it around, couple turns, couple turns on this edge, and then we roll across the center in one sweeping motion, and that's it. That tool is now extremely sharp and is ready to rock and roll. Super, super sharp and ready to go. It's that simple. That's why I like the jig so much. That's why I like using this setup in this system. So that's a 3 8 gouge. Let's say we jump up to a 5 8 bowl gouge. Much bigger bowl gouge here, right? All we do is loosen the threads, bring this in, let me turn this off, bring this up to my jig, square it up, inch and three quarters is all that is. This is ensuring that I have an inch and three quarters sticking up from here. Now all we do is come over, take our marker, just shine us a little spot right there. While this is still spinning, we kind of just come over, touch it a little, and as you can see, that's where consistency starts to come in. You can see the line is even all the way across. So now we come over, same simple process. Hit a little bit on one side. Flip a little bit on the other side. Come across the front of the tool. And there we have an extremely, extremely sharp burr on the end of the uh, gouge. It's that simple, stick it in the water a little bit, make sure it's kind of cooled down so I don't burn myself showing you guys. And that's all there is to it. That's exactly how you sharpen bowl gouges. This is exactly how you sharpen spindle gouges. Everything with this system. That's why I really like this system so far. I'm gonna flip the camera around, get us a little better angle on some other stuff. And I'm gonna show you real quick how we do scrapers and how we do skews. Okay, so here we are. Got you guys a little bit better angle here on this platform. And I just have a regular um, Benjamin's Best scraper that I use sometimes uh, on my bowls. And we basically wanna do the same thing. So what we're gonna be doing is, is we're gonna be sharpening this. So this needs to be the angle of this, right? So once again, 
I grab my marker. This marker really works well. Once you kind of get the hang of things, you can kind of um, kind of not maybe use it as much. And uh, so I know that this is already set, but what you would do is loosen this knob up. This all comes as part of the, the one-way setup. And you basically want to make sure that this angle, you can see that I'm barely hitting the bottom here. So let me turn it on just a little bit where you can see. So you can see I'm barely hitting the bottom here. That means we need to move the tool rest down a little so where it can hit the entire piece. Very simple to do. All you do is loosen this up, slide it forward a little bit, bring your tool back up, and you can see it's hitting a little bit further, so we need to go a little more. All right, let me move this out slightly. Bring it down just a little bit more. Now you can see how much further we've gone up the up the edge of the tool here and of course you want to make sure that you turn this thing off in between checking stuff you know do as I say kind of thing not as I do in certain instances here and then basically all you want to do is you want to hold your fingers in the center and we want to pivot the tool just like this And that's all we're doing is putting an edge on it. We're actually raising the burr, <clears throat> excuse me, the burr that gets raised up on the edge of here is what cuts everything. Very straightforward process. And it just really puts a really clean edge uh, on, this, on this scraper. And that goes for any size scraper that you use. Um, small, big, whatever. Same thing, same principle. Now, when we're doing skews, when we're doing the skew, there's a little bit more to it that we have to do. Um, let me back you guys up a little bit. I'm not even gonna cut this part out. Let me back you up a little bit. Let me bring you up. Real time action here. And what you use to do skews is you actually use this attachment. This attachment I picked up is not even the actual Wolverine brand. It's an off brand and it works perfectly. This is the Wolverine attachment. This actually just goes in here. We loosen this up to allow this to slide back and forth. We take our good old skew chisel, right? So what you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be sharpening your skew chisel from side to side. Let me make sure you guys can get a good view here. Sorry about that, I'm gonna move you one more time and bring you guys in. I'm gonna raise you up a little bit. Don't get too mad at me. There we go, real time stuff. So, basically what you're gonna be doing is you're going to do one edge from here then you're going to flip it over and do the other edge from here. What you obviously need to make sure of is that this thing is off completely 100% as you're setting this up. Next thing, do not loosen this and adjust this as this is running. What will happen is, is if you've got this running and you move this out too far, this is going to jam in here and it's going to create a whole bunch of problems. So what we want to do, oh, tool rest. I'm telling you, this is live stuff right here. So you're seeing it as it's being made. So I can see that I'm not on my bevel here. And we wanna do the same thing with this that we did with the other stuff. We wanna use the marker on both sides. And that'll tell us when we're square to where we wanna be. So I come here, I kinda of eyeball it. I see that I am in too far or out too far because I want it to rest flat. We turn this on and we very carefully run it a little bit. Let's see where we are. 
And as you can see, I'm way down at the bottom of my marker. So in order for me to cut this on the bottom side of where my marker is, I need to move this in slightly. So move it in slightly, just a little bit. Lock it down real good. Don't turn this back on yet and just kind of come up. Use the momentum of the wheels to check and see where we are. And now you can see we're moving up further and further each time. So to where I want to be. So let's bring it in one more time. See if we got enough momentum here. Now you can see we're starting to remove. And what this does, this action here allows you to sharpen this skew, okay, without putting a big belly in it because the wheel is, you know, the wheel is flat, but you're bringing in an arc motion, which is keeping this flat also. So you spin it this way to get this side. Then you flip it over, point facing the other way, the top side. And now you're doing the other side of the skew. Just be very careful. Take your time. Make sure everything is cutting the way you want it to cut. Make sure you don't drop this handle so where anything can jam in. And you just get a really good, consistent, even sharpen each time. And you just take your time. And before you know it, you'll have a, a completely sharpened set of tools. All right, everybody, I hope you uh, got something from this video. I just wanted to share with you guys real quick about how I do my sharpening and, and how I go through the routine. My, my, my sharpening setup is usually just right over here next to my lathe. And as I'm turning, and if I notice it just needs a little bit of freshening up, it's very simple for me to run over here, not run, step right over here to the side, throw the jig on real quick, do a little quick touch up on it, and uh, just do cutting. I always, always do a quick sharpen before, or a touch up on the sharpening right before I do my final cut. It just makes for less sanding, less issues, and things like that. You know, this is not an... Uh, it is an endorsement, I guess, in a sense, for the one-way setup and the CBN wheels because I've been using this setup for now for about four years or so, and it works flawlessly for me every single time. I have no issues or anything like that. So be sure you guys head into the uh, description down there. Check out some of the Amazon affiliate links, please. If you could decide to purchase some of this, it helps me out a lot and uh, helps keep the channel going helps me create more content. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like to suggest or anything like that, leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to uh, have a discussion with you guys about how this all works or if there's anything else I can do, just let me know. And uh, until I see you guys later, have a good one.